Let's now look at RNNT personalization. Here is a concrete example of personalization. Say we have an audio which has word PyTorch in its reference transcript. Since PyTorch is a rare word in the ASR training data, the baseline model without contextualization might predict the word Py space two words instead of PyTorch. What we want to do is utilize a list of relevant contextual words corresponding to audio along with audio signal to generate the transcript for the audio. In this example, if we have seen PyTorch in the context of the audio, then we would like to utilize the context and predict the word PyTorch in the output of the ASR. How can we output contextual words in the transcript of the audio if they appear in the audio, especially if these contextual words are rare words? The answer is boosting. The boosting can be done either explicitly or implicitly. In order to do implicit boosting, we need to make changes in components of RNNT model in training and make RNNT model aware of contextual words. The boosting can also be done explicitly by boosting hypotheses in decoding which has contextual words in them. This could be either done in greedy decoding or beam search decoding without making any changes in RNNT model. As you would imagine, we can use both implicit and explicit boosting for best results. Here is a system that we built at Facebook that allows us to do implicit boosting. In original formulism of RNNT, we have audio encoder and text predictor. We introduce a new component, biasing module, along with audio encoder and text predictor. Biasing module has a trial built using contextual words relevant to each audio. Say relevant contextual words for an audio is Android, Anna and PyTorch. So we would build a try using these three contextual words. Then at each distinct history during training and decoding, we query this try and find out what would be next possible letter if we were to finish last unfinished word in the text history with one of the word from the list of relevant contextual words. Let's say our text history is movies with an. The last unfinished word for this text history is an. And if we query the try, then there are two words from the contextual list that could be finished with prefix of an. These words are android and anna. If we were to generate android in our final transcript, then the next emitted letter should be d. If we were to generate Anna in our final transcript, then the next emitted letter should be N in our hypothesis. We pass the information about next possible letters as N from Anna and D from Android through a one-hot vector to the joiner. This acts as an extra cue for RNNT model to emit next letter as D or N if the acoustic of the audio supports. With this, we are now able to output probability distribution from softmax that are conditionally dependent on audio features, text history of the transcript produced so far, and output from the try built with contextual word. The hope is that if in audio we indeed spoke Android or Anna, it would be correctly emitted in the output because of the extra cue provided by biasing module to the joiner. And with this, we can emit Android or Anna letter by letter with cues from try in biasing module even if they are not frequent words in the training. We will need to make changes both in training and in the process of decoding to have biasing module in the RNNT. And hence, we can refer this to as implicit boosting. We would next look at an approach to do personalization where we don't need to make changes in the training and that system could be classified as an explicit boosting. This system of introducing biasing module in RNNT improves recall of contextual words by 8.3% compared to the baseline. You can find more details about the model or the experiments in the paper Contextual RNNT for Open Domain ASR. Here is an approach to do explicit boosting. This approach is called Salofusion. Here we build a personalized language model using the list of contextual words. We query this personalized language model in different steps of decoding and get a score from the personalized language model. This personalized language model would give us non-zero boosting score for hypotheses that have occurrence 
of one of the contextual words in them. In this approach, we can boost occurrence of context words appearing in a specific language pattern. For example, if we were building support for calling domain in a smart digital assistant, then we could boost words from contact list in sentence that starts with a assistant call. Say we have word Tom in the contact list of the user of the digital assistant, then this boosting would boost a hypothesis such as a assistant called Tom with some score compared to other hypothesis candidates that do not have words from contact list in them. This could be referred as pattern based boosting. We could also boost occurrence of contextual words appearing anywhere in the hypothesis. This could be called as in the wild boosting. An example of this would be message Tom that I will be late. Since Tom is in the list of contextual words, the hypothesis message Tom that I will be late will get boosted because Tom appears in it. In this approach, we don't need to make any changes in training and we can do personalization just by making changes during the process of decoding. The idea behind this approach is that if a hypothesis has one of the contextual word in it, then boost the score of that hypothesis in Beam search with some factor. This will favor hypotheses which has contextual words in them. How much boosting will be done would be decided by boosting factor or language model weight. We use validation set to tune the value of boosting factor to avoid false triggering of contextual words in the output of ASR. This approach that we just looked at is called cellophane fusion and is an example of explicit boosting. Here we did not need to make changes in the RNNT model components. In the previous approach of doing implicit boosting, we have introduced a new module in RNNT model called the biasing module. Another module that we experimented for personalization was attention module. This module has higher computational complexity than biasing module. However, the ideas discussed in the attention module can help us build truly multi-model ASR systems. So for example, if we wanted to build ASR system that would be conditionally dependent on the audio content of the video, image content of the video and the relevant contextual words of the video while transcribing the video, then attention module can help us. To illustrate, let's discuss how we can use attention module to bias with list of contextual words. Both biasing module and attention module were introduced in the paper from our group Contextual RNNT for Open Domain ASR which was published at Interspeech. We have two new components in the attention module. The first component is embedding extractor and the second component is attention module itself. Embedding extractor represents each contextual word into an embedding. In order to bias with words from contextual data, we first convert each contextual word into its embedding. These embeddings can either represent what is the semantic of the word. So for example, words dog and horse would have embeddings that are closer to each other. Or these embeddings can represent what is the sequence of letters in the word. In our experiment in the paper, we use sequence of letters of the word to get word embedding. Once we have represented each word with an embedding, we can get attention value between the predictor state and each of these word embeddings to find out what is the likelihood of finishing last unfinished word in the hypothesis with each of these contextual words. Then we can pass the weighted average of the contextual embeddings to the joiner. The weight given to each contextual word embedding is based upon attention value between the predictor state of the RNNT and embedding of the contextual word. The predictor state of RNNT represents what is the content of the history so far in the hypothesis. So these attention values are computing correlation between the history of the hypothesis and each of the contextual word. You can think of a use case scenario where rather than using embeddings of contextual words, we could use embeddings of the image frames in the video. Conditionally depending on the contextual embeddings along with audio embedding and text embedding will hopefully give us probabilities from the softmax layer which are not only dependent on the audio embedding and the text embedding but also on the embeddings of the relevant contextual signals. You can find more details about it in our paper Contextual RNNT for Open Domain ASR. 
here is an experiment that we have in our paper contextual RNNT for open domain ASR to compare performance of attention module and biasing module. We have four different RNNT models in our experiment. First RNNT model is baseline RNNT model and it does not use any contextualization. The second RNNT model uses attention module. Third RNNT model uses biasing module. The fourth RNNT model uses both biasing module and attention module. We compute the efficiency of these four RNNT models with precision and recall for contextual words. Increase in recall shows more correct contextual words being recovered in the transcript generated from RNNT model, whereas decrease in precision shows false triggering of contextual words. You can find more details about the precision and recall definition in our paper. As shown in the table here, uses of either attention module or biasing module lead to similar recall gains. Combining both attention module and biasing module leads to a bit higher recall gain. As I have previously mentioned, biasing module has lower computational complexity than attention module. In another paper from our group, contextualized streaming end-to-end -end speech recognition with tri-based deep biasing and cellofusion, we have also shown results for combining biasing module with cellofusion. Deep biasing refers to uses of biasing module in the paper. Please find more details about experiment setup and the gains from combining cellofusion with deep biasing or biasing module in the paper. With this, we will conclude the personalization section of the lecture.